I welcome you all for today's lecture. Today we are going to see how to determine normal stresses with the help of a simple problem. And also we are going to look at how to construct free body diagram and how to apply Lamy's theorem to calculate the unknown forces. Let me read the problem. The 80 kilogram lamb is supported by two rods AB and BC as shown in figure. And this is the given configuration. This is the rod AB and BC. If AB has a diameter of 10 mm and BC has a diameter of 8 mm, determine the average normal stress in each rod. Here we are asked to calculate the stresses which are acting on these two rods AB and BC. The diameter of AB is 10 mm and the diameter of the rod BC is 8 mm. Before finding the stresses which are acting on these rods, we must know the forces which are acting on the rod. Then only we can calculate the normal stresses along these rods. So for that we need to construct the free body diagram of the given configuration. Here we have got two rods AB and BC and at point B a lamp is supported. The lamp has a mass of 80 kg. So we are going to construct the free body diagram of this point B where the lamp is supported because at this point B the rod AB and BC is connected together. So we are going to construct the free body diagram of the lamp B. We have constructed the two axes, horizontal axis and vertical axis. And we are going to construct the free body diagram of the lamp B. Okay. And the first force is which is acting along the rod BC and which is represented as the direction and magnitude of these force because we don't know the magnitude that is what the thing we are going to calculate here we have just represented this force FPC in the same direction as that of this rod BC and along BA another tensile force is acting and here it is represented in the free body diagram which is FBA the lamp has a self weight so the force is going to be acting in the downwards direction so the magnitude of this force is the mass of the lamp which is 80 kg multiplied by 9.81 and which is equal to 784.8 newton now we have to angularly locate these forces and here we have got the angular distance of 60 degree from horizontal and this one is 60 degree as the downward force due to this weight of the lamp is pointing towards the ground this angle is going to be 90 degree similarly this angle is also going to be 90 degree so now we must know the value of angular distance between this force FBC and the horizontal axis for that we are given with some information and with the help of this information we are going to calculate this angle we are going to apply the trigonometry concept here for that the sine theta is equal to opposite side by hypotenuse which is 3 divided by 5 so the theta is equal to sine inverse of 3 by 5 and the theta value is 36.87 degree and here we represent this angular distance is 36.87 degree. Now we have constructed the free body diagram of the given configuration by considering this point B. Now we are going to simplify this diagram uh, by adding these two angles together as well as by adding these two angles together okay. and also we are going to find out the angle between the FBA and FBC first let us add these two angles that is 60 degree plus 90 degree it becomes 
150 degree and we heard this 90 degree and that is 6.87 degree and the angle between these two forces become 126.87 degree and the remaining angle can be calculated by subtracting these two angles that is 150 degree and 126.87 degree from the total angle that is 360 degree. So this angle is going to be 360 degree minus 150 degree minus 126.87 degree and the value is 83.13 degree. Now we are going to apply the Lamy's theorem for this configuration. So what is Lamy's theorem? It states if three coplanar concurrent and non-collinear forces are in equilibrium then the magnitude of each force will be proportional to the sine of angle between the other two forces. So if you want to apply Lamy's theorem the given configuration must satisfy these conditions. First there must be a three forces. In our cases we have got three forces FBA, FBC and this 784.8 Newton and these three forces must be coplanar. In our cases these three forces lies on a same plane so they are coplanar and concurrent in nature. Concurrent means these three forces must meet at the same point. So here at point B these three forces are meeting and these three forces must not be a non-collinear that means they must not lie on the same line and finally these three forces must be in equilibrium so then we can apply the Lamy's theorem it states that if all these conditions are satisfied then each force is directly proportional to sine of angle between other two forces now let us apply the Lamy's theorem so first force is FBA divided by sine of angle between other two forces the angle is 126.87 degree so FPA divided by sine 126.87 degree which is equal to the other force that is FPC divided by sine of angle between the other two forces that is the angle is 150 degree so FPC divided by sine 150 degree is equal to this force 784.8 Newton divided by sine of angle between these two forces that is 83.13 degree the angular distances so 784.8 divided by sine 83.13 degree so in these three terms we can calculate the value for this term because we know all those values so this term becomes 790.13 Four, seven. Now let us calculate the value of FPA by using this term and this value. So FPA divided by sine 126.87 degree which is equal to 790.47. So here the only unknown is FBA. So the FBA value is equal to 632.38 Newton by multiplying this 790.47 with sin 126.87 degree we can get this value as 632.38 Newton now let us equate these two terms that is FBC divided by sin 150 degree which is equal to 790.47 now we can calculate this value that is FBC because this is the only unknown in this equation so FBC is equal to 790.47 multiplied by sin 150 degree the value is 395.2 Newton now we have calculated the two unknown forces FBA and FBC with the help of Lamy's theorem now let us see how to find out the stresses which are acting along the rod BA and BC because the force which is acting along these two rods are now determine so we can calculate the stresses how to find out the normal stresses along these two rods BC and AB 
force along BC is 395.2 Newton. We have calculated the value as well as the force along AB is 632.38 Newton. Now let us see how to find out the normal stresses along these two rod. First let us consider this rod that is BC. The force which is acting along this BC is 395.2 Newton. By applying the Newton's third law that means every action has its own equal and opposite reaction and this force is also become 392.5 Newton. Only thing is it is opposite in nature. So now you can see the rod BC which is subjected to two tensile force of same magnitude. The diameter of this rod is 8 mm which is given in the problem. Now the stress along this BC is equal to the tensile force 395.2 Newton divided by the cross sectional area of this BC. Okay, so FB is 395.2 Newton divided by cross sectional area of this BC is pi by 4 d square. By solving this uh, relation, we can calculate the stress which is acting along BC is 7.86 Newton per mm square. Okay. Now we have calculated the normal stress along this rod BC. Now let us calculate the normal stress along AB. Let us construct the rod here AB. It is subjected to a tensile force of 632.38 Newton. By applying Newton's third law, here also we got that equal and opposite force this side that is 632.38 Newton and the diameter of this rod is 10 mm. Now we have got all those values to calculate the normal stress along the rod AB. So the normal stress along AB is equal to this tensile force divided by the cross sectional area of this rod is equal to 632.38 divided by pi by 4 10 square and by solving this one we have got the normal stress value as 8.05 Newton per mm square. In this problem we have seen how to calculate the normal stresses and also we have discussed how to draw free body diagram for the given configuration and how to apply Lamy's theorem to find out the unknown forces. Because finding forces along these rods are necessary to calculate the normal stress. Thank you for watching the lecture.